Do you? Hey guys, can you hear me? Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome everybody who's in here. Uh, good morning, if it's morning to you right now. from Orlando. Orlando's really cool place. I've been getting like really stir crazy, really want to travel um, naturally at this moment in life where you know travel isn't really too much of an option. Um, hello everybody, Frank, side effects, Gabano, hi, it's 5 p.m. there. Boa tarde, Gabano. Um, welcome everybody, welcome, welcome. Today we are going to work on something that I'm very excited about, um, which is the sculpt. Um, I'll tell you guys all about it in a second, I'm just letting more people filter in. Um, but I started this on Thursday night, um, so I'm very excited to keep going. Um, so for those of you who don't know, my name is Ana. Carolina. I am from Brazil. I stream on Pixelogic channel for like over two years now uh, in English and Portuguese. I am a pro technical artist, um, which means that in my case I don't get to play ZBrush all day at work, sadly. But my I love, love ZBrush and I love character art, so that's what I dedicate a lot of my free time to. Um, all my streaming is done in ZBrush, always, even on my personal channel. Um, I Today I'm going to be streaming in English, so in case you guys are wondering, today is a full English stream. Um, I, I do English and Portuguese. Portuguese was two weeks ago. But yeah, I'm very excited to work on this project. Let me get my reference up. Uh, because... Because um, this is a character that is a little bit more, a little bit more expressive about who I am as an artist, a little bit um, than my usual work, which is usually a combination of tech art and character art in some way. Um, so, this this character was from a little book I wrote when I was in high school, and by little I mean it's enormous. An enormous book that I wrote, um, sort of wrote, sort of memorized. I don't know, I should probably write the rest. Um, in high school, because I don't know about you guys, but back in high school, I had so much free time and I was so bored all the time, and that was great for creativity. 
Um, in fact, I've been actually kind of thinking about um, about bringing, forcing that into my life, kind of like getting rid of all distractions so that I can be creative. Let me turn the music down a little bit. Um, and and it's from this like enormous book that I wrote that had like a lot of world building, a lot of like politics and tensions and religion and history and like multiple storylines and all that cool stuff, I guess. And this was just a minor part of it, but um, what I want to do is create mostly using ZBrush this scene from the book, uh, but it's going to be still shots, right? of this mermaid uh, right after she gets killed. It's gonna be very sad. That's kind of why I've made her like already look a little bit sad. Um, like she's not supposed to be like a cute character. She's supposed to be like a, an, it's supposed to be a dramatic scene. So I'm gonna push that a little bit today. Um, but so far, you know, I've kind of like brought out the, um, the, the a little bit of the veiny tones, a little bit of um, color that I think makes it look a little bit more somber and I'm already excited about it um, and it's going to be her I have a sketch here I, I should have put it on the computer before I started streaming but since I didn't I'll just show you guys good morning Michael good morning I'm your Z crush that's a creative one um, so basically, I want um, I want to create the scene where this mermaid is just like floating in a shallow body of water, uh, clutching her chest, but already dead, um, and an arrow is going to be coming out of her chest. And I don't know if you guys can even see that, uh, but I want it to be um, heavy on the gesture. Um, I want there to be a lot of like energy in that piece, kind of like like torn like a little bit you know it's supposed to be a sad piece um so i'm actually very excited to do something like that because usually i get caught up in the uh, the crossover of character arts and technical arts um so yeah so let me show you guys again what we're going for i don't know i don't think i'm gonna get to pose today so because i literally just started so we're going to like work on her look Make her look a little sadder. Here's the whole body, and you can really tell I really um, foamed it in with these blackouts. But the important part is uh, to block out, really. Oh, yeah. um, so that's really the important part. I'm trying to go for a very delicate looking humanoid, um, you know, with a lot of. a lot of veins showing through the body. I want her to almost look like she's been submerged in water for too long because she has. She's a mermaid. Um, and humans aren't made to withstand being underwater for that long. But and and you tell me um, and you tell me like, oh mermaids are made to be in water. But then I'd be like, not this one because there's a whole backstory to it. Um, I, I, I would feel very nerdy getting into that though. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I would get geeked out and I would really have to push my storytelling abilities and they're not that good. I don't know the name of the statue in English, but look at the gesture on after Jika Safnyakini. The girl have great dynamic anatomy. I know the name in English, I can look that up. I can't show it on stream though because it has no idea thing. That it's great gesture. That's what I want. Like that, like that, like stretched neck, um, the grasping hands. You know, um, that's really just what I want. Uh, I want like that distortion in the stomach. Like she's going to like not have a linear stomach. I'm going to put a lot of work in the posing of the character. So like it's not going to be like a T posed character mesh that I want to create. I want to create like this already like posed, like really detailed character. I think I have a lot to learn from that and it would be a great expression of that particular scene from the book that, that I wrote. Um, wrote. Oh gamer girl, hi, I'm good, how are you? 
Yeah, I, I definitely have to be looking at, um, I definitely have to be looking at classical painters and sculptors for, for, um, gesture. And I actually have a bunch of them in my little, um, in my little pure rough board, but I can't show you guys because it has too much nudity, but I can show you, uh, this one painting here that is really instrumental to this piece. This right here. I don't remember who painted it. Clint? No, it can't be. Um, of this really famous painting of this bed, like, lady in a beautiful gown, just floating in a river, or like in a small pond. This is the kind of thing I'm going for. So she's going to be floating in the river, like, partially submerged. Her chest and head will be out of water. Um, her hands will be on top of her chest, her abdomen will sink in a little bit, and then her tail will like be like twisting partially in and out of the water. But anyway, let's get into it. So I've been I've been using a lot of um, Damien Standard on this, uh, but like inverting it so that I can create these like interesting. Uh, looking lines along the piece, um, which are very- actually I should go down a subdivision or two because I do not want to hurt it. <laughs> Nailed it. So I'm using the thing in standard but inverse so I'm just holding that alt to kind of create these interesting um, shapes that I, they are a little bit fishy, a little bit uh, inhuman. Um, I want her to have that kind of like been submerged for too long look, so I'm kind of like doing things like pressing down um, her earlobe and having it almost have melted into the face a little bit. Um, little things like that I think um, are gonna, are gonna be really cool for this piece, but overall like you know she's a very She's still a very delicate piece, um, so I don't want to like monster her out, you know, I want to to keep her a beautiful woman um, who has just suffered a tragic death and is partially monstered out. Uh, thank you, cool gamer girl. Tell us the thing. Aries, hi. Uh, I'm making a mermaid too, but it's absolutely not gorgeous or delicate. Uh, I love monster mer mermaids though, like, it, they are so good. Um, you can totally tell I accidentally drew some straight lines across the model and I don't have to, I don't have the saved file anymore that I can just fix it. That was Sir John Everett Millay's Ophelia. Thank you so much! That will help me find more about it. Thank you. But today I kind of want to like work on a little bit also the anatomy where, where her tail connects. What do you guys think is a good way for me to um, to um, make some um, scales? I was thinking maybe a, a VDM or maybe a nano mesh. I'm using, I'm still using a Damien standard um, but inverted like it, it, it's probably not a tool that I should rely on this much, but I'm getting a really interesting look with it for this model because it makes it look like whatever's under her skin is very thin and delicate. Um, very, like, the bones are very thin and delicate, and that's really cool. Like, if I just go along here a bit. Sometimes, you know? It's very interesting. Um, I, I've never thought of using this tool like this, but you know, the world has some weird ways of making you do things. Did a nano mesh for the scales? Did it turn out good? With my own success. <laughs> Here at Blaine, I am a, um, I'm a VR technical artist, so I talk a lot about VR. Um, so. We often have discussions about VR and whatnot. Make her belly out a little bit. The the actual like abdomen, abdominal part, I guess. I don't like it <laughs> the way it is right now. But we will work, keep working on it. 
I do tend to find that I spend too much time on on um, the belly area, but I love the belly area. I don't know what it is. I threw in the whip part of the Discord. You can check it out later. Absolutely, second favorite. I had a tail post already, which was dumb, so they don't totally follow the direction of the tail at the curve. Ah, so maybe I I'll do that before I. Post. Oh no. I just want to like make her seem more delicate and fragile. Make her um, thorax and rib cage and all that look a little bit smaller. I think it will help. Plus, I whenever I'm working on this project, since she's supposed to be floating, I'm kind of like putting her um, <laughs> horizontally a lot because I know that that's how she's gonna look. Like I think the sh main shot's gonna be like. One from here, kind of like, uh, like a three-quarter shot of her floating, and then like one from from the front. Actually, is what I've been picturing. Um, so I have to keep checking back to this, these positions, making sure that um, making sure that it doesn't look horrible to me. I guess. Yeah, Nishar, hi, welcome to the stream. Uh, awesome. Is gravity sketch? We are. What are you using? Which did you brush out your sculpting? Oh, me too. Although, I must say, I have very low tolerance for spending too much time in VR. And I know that if ZBrush came out with a VR, um, a VR plugin or whatever, like, it would totally just ruin my life because I'd spend way too much time in VR. It gives, it gives me, like, I don't know, headaches. It just makes me feel unsettled. And I'm gonna like almost overly dig out this um, belly button. That's not too much, but we can always smooth it. Smoothing is our friend. <laughs> I found that like when making female figures, um, I am I have to be more liberal with the smoothing brush than male because um, you know most of the time. A woman's figure isn't that, what do you call it, like, boldly, it doesn't have that much contrast in the lines, you know, it's very soft and fatty, usually, uh, even if the woman is extremely thin or if she's extremely fit, um, there's always a little bit of extra, extra softness to be aware of, and I find that a lot of people just go crazy when they're modeling women, and they'll just, like, throw dip wrinkles and like huge pores and like muscle striation everywhere and like tense muscles everywhere and i'm like you know it's it usually doesn't look right um Russian, hello google does have one i don't know what it's called either Thiago, the bang, I'm playing the bang. Feliz de estar aqui. It's much more difficult to be a younger woman than it is over in Cleveland. Although I do have this like, um, I don't know, mental block for when it comes to old wrinkly people. Um, I think I, I I get nervous about the um, the wrinkly, wrinkling business, and I just I guess I guess I just get nervous about. It. I need to practice more. I really. I really, 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 really want to take the um, course by Chris Costa. Amazing, amazing Brazilian artist. We all look up to him. And by we all, I mean all, our, all of us Brazilians. Um, his course, uh, he has these bundles on his website. It's called, I don't remember the exact name of the website, but if you just look up Chris Costa, you'll find it. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to get the courage to spend the money. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's $600 for like three bundles of like pre-recorded classes, but it's still worth it, you know? Um, I just have to do it. And then, um, and then I'm going to be the best. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a thing. Thank you so much for the Crystal K, yes, thank you, second favorites.
For me, the hardest part of the human body is the arms, but um, I also always struggle a little bit with this like pelvic area. What, for you guys, what is the hardest part of sculpting the human body? And what's the best part? Give me both. Best and hardest. Well, they, they might converge, they might be the same, right? Like, the hardest, one of the hardest parts is, is the face, but it's also one of the coolest to sculpt. Let me, um, actually, I'm going to do this thing real fast, where I'm going to colorize it and take a screenshot of her down here so that people can actually see what we're working on as they enter the stream. Back muscles are the hardest. Back muscles, they truly have um, a very specific way of of confusing me. Like because because the bones, especially um, what do you call this, the shoulder plates, uh, they they slide so much. It confuses me based on reference to reference. You know. Uh, Ashley, hello. Chad, some of the forearm anatomy I find difficult. The forearm too. The thing about arms is that um, you know they, they vary so much based on position and pronation. So like you might make a T pose character like that, but it might their arm might be like facing down, forward, up. Oh my god, it's like all over the place. There's so much range of motion and it's so confusing. It's like confusion noodles. I'm struggling on the head, the shape of the skull. Oh, that's a good one though, because like, so so like, this is gonna come across strange, but the skull is one of the coolest things to sculpt to study because um, if you were to make a sculpt of the skull to study, then you have an amazing portfolio piece. Like it's like a standalone portfolio piece, um, and it just it's it's a cool thing to have, you know. So you kind of get the double bonus of like learning more about head anatomy and you can just put it in your portfolio. I wouldn't say every part of the body is equally, um, what do you call it, like pervasive? I don't, I don't think that's the right word. It's like equally compelling in a portfolio, but the skull, you know, it's good, it stays there. I often mess up the armpits best, tied between putting in belly buttons and sculpting noses. <laughs> Like the um the fun parts. Um, noses are fun. Like they're so difficult to draw, but sculpting them is actually really great. I think back muscle, especially the scapula area, because it varies a lot in every movement. I, absolutely, it just it it's it's hard to um interpret sometimes. But you know, we do what we can. <laughs> it, it gets better with the more you study, for sure. Existe alguma recomendação de pose que seja ideal para retopologia? Tipo, como os músculos devem estar contraídos na escultura e que fique bom na retopologia? Pergunto isso porque às vezes mudou algo e a versão de retopologia quando o personagem é animado, às vezes os músculos reformam de forma esquisita. Não sei bem se me fiz entender. É, eu acho que eu entendi, mas eu acho que na verdade não é a posição, eu acho que é mais a, a retopologia em si que está causando a, a deformação. Mas também, às vezes, nem tem jeito da deformação, as pessoas usam. É corrective blend shapes hoje em dia para consertar isso. Não tem jeito, você tem que ver. Depois você pesquisa corrective blend shapes no God of War. Vienna, me study on Sunday using Mare from Crackers Cafe. Nice! I have no idea what Crackers Cafe is actually, now that I think about it.
Jorge, olá. Tô aqui. Te largo o ombro, não é problema. É, é, que, é que existem vários, é, vários jeitos de fazer a topologia do ombro é, e do, do sapato, digamos assim. É, e você vai ter que, eu acho que, experimentar mais pra ver qual que você mais gosta. Tem gente que... Posso botar aqui rapidinho? Tem gente que simplesmente faz, tipo, loops assim. Sabe? Tem gente... Ah. Isso é assim, mal... Um, tu fala de... Tem gente que faz os loops, tipo, seguindo os músculos. E tal. Você vai ter que experimentar. He was asking about the apology and like his shoulders deforming too much. Um, and I, there are many schools of thoughts about um, how to do the apology to fix that kind of problem. Um, I've tried both. I don't have a, um, a preference as of right now. Uh, but um, I can tell you that that's a very common problem and it's like it's not it's it's something that kind of just it's almost like the, the nature of the beast um, people nowadays they do corrective blend shapes a lot um, to to fix that kind of issue sometimes because like the shoulder itself changes shape when it opens or when your arm opens or closes um, so they are they do blend shapes for that Uh, sabe se tem alguma aplicação de VR para esculpir usando acessórios de roupa de VR? Não sei. Tem que pegar uma Edson. I have no idea how I'm going to design this area right here. Um, I'm going to look up sharks. Why not? I have no idea what to search for to see like the underside of sharks. I guess I should just say sharks underside. <laughs> More folks. Maybe more folks have good designs, but I don't want to take their designs, you know. I might stick to the human part for now. So what are you guys working on today? Anybody doing anything interesting? I probably will spend a lot of the day working on this project. It's kind of fun, I must say. Concept art, yes. All day in After Effects projects? Interesting. <laughs> you say I did one fish head and a human bottom, that's pretty funny. I didn't see it. Well, I mean, I've seen that, that like, idea, but I haven't seen which one you're talking about. It's a very weird song. I must say. Uh, is this for something or is this just something you felt like doing? It's for a personal project, so I guess both. <laughs> um, I wanted to do this piece of from like 
a book I wrote in high school. Um, so I'm just doing that. I'm like chopping the hair of a stylized Daenerys character. Oh my god, I love Daenerys. I mean, season last season Daenerys wasn't the best person ever, but you know, it was good enough for me. I did so much yard work yesterday, I'm just goofing off today. Good job. Trying to make a cool armor for that skeleton I showed you. It's so hard. Oh man, are you doing it in ZBrush? What method are you using for your skeleton armor? I'm trying to find the right reference. Sorry, guys. It's impossible, apparently. What do you guys think about um, gills on rare folk? Um, I kind of like want to try it. You know. I could always put it on its own layer and then see if I like it or not. New layer, gills one. Let's see. I have no idea how to design it. Like, would it just go over the ribs? Maybe like something like side here. No idea where I'd put gills. Maybe on her neck. That could work. I've seen I've seen mermaids with heels on their neck. Not in real life, of course. Let's try that first. I'm just gonna do like a random curve one for now. Maybe like coming down under the jaw. Basically just masking out um, so that I can um, do a little moving around, you know, making it sharp. I'm just gonna move the bottom part upwards into the gill. And then just a little bit down. And then I'm gonna switch and move the gill downwards. should also make it its own um, poly group while I'm at it. Control H to make it its own poly group. Ah, scary. I'm working way too high poly for this. Sure. I'll just add a little. Yeah, just real quick texture to it. What happened? Maybe give it a little inflate the edges. We're just we're just prototyping, as I like to call it. Maybe follow the flow of her ribs. Yeah, it's totally a good idea. <laughs> On the back. Near the last baby. Oh, we could do it. But the, the thing is that I'm not. I'm going to render this piece in a very specific manner, and the back's not going to show. Um, so I, I'm going to avoid adding extra work to the back because you know, reason. The neck does not look good, so we're going to go up and delete that. Turn off that layer. And we can a new one. Gills too. This is the beauty of layers, guys. Like, I'm sure you guys all know this at this point, but layers are dope. They let you test things with like minimal error or loss, you know? So, following the flow. I'm just gonna do it. Fade towards the front. And just pull it down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and like make it frilly. Let's see what that does.
I feel like she'd have frilly gills. I don't know about you guys. So since we are going for a delicate piece, I'm just gonna throw it in there. Ooh, that does look super cool. Not perfect, but like interesting, you know. Let's see how that looks from the um, dead perspective. Masa about that, Haji. Are there limitations with layers and subdivision levels? Um, are um, like for example, a lot, a lot of more destructive tools. You can't use them when layers are were being used, like um, trim curves and stuff like that. Um, but you know that's a minor issue. Um, there does seem to be sometimes errors with layers. Am I in the wrong, right ZBrush? I'm not in the right ZBrush. I'm in an older version of ZBrush. Let me save this and open ZBrush back up. I have this bad habit of installing software and not deleting the old one. So I'm at ZBrush 2020 right now, but I should be at ZBrush 2020.1. something. Um, which actually fixed a lot of the layers problem. Hmm. What was the book that inspired you called was the book that inspired you called Venus on the Half Shell? No. Um I'm guessing it's about mermaid? Or Venus. One of the two. Alright, so I'm gonna close this. Do not save project. Haha. -ha. It was 2020.1.3. It's what I want. It's what you want. Don't make mistakes. Do you guys like my background? It's very relaxing to me. By the way, guys, if you haven't yet, make sure to follow uh, these channels of Pixelogic. A lot of amazing artists uh, stream on here on the regular, plus the pros that actually make ZBrush. Plus, now they have this new segment called um, ZBrush Masters, which is amazing. They bring up these like pro famous um, ZBrush artists and interview them. They do demos and stuff like that. So make sure to follow. Loading, 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 loading. There it is. Ah. There we got our little gills going. Oh my god, the red box truly makes everything look worse than it is. Um, pulling up the base material. Let's go ahead and colorize her. Um, another thing I'm going to do is you see how dark the base material makes everything. Um, this is supposed to be a very pale woman. It's supposed to be a very um, light piece. So I'm going to go here in Material, Modifiers, and I'm going to pull Ambient up. You see the difference that makes? It's like making uh, the matte cap less dark, the shadows are a little bit less dark, um, and everything. So that's really cool. Now we have these little gills. Um, Let's go back to the layers and keep working on it. Um, I wish I had saved my mask, but alas, I did not. Um, that is called making bad decisions. So let's continue on Gills 2, just see what we can do with a little, little bit of like detailing, kind of tie that into the the anatomy a little bit, get creative with it. This is the good part, I think. It's almost creepy now that she has like her human skin showing too. I feel like it's bulky. Let's use the move brush. And I'm going to use it by uh, pressing alt and just dragging so that it creates like a 
a perpendicular force on the mesh to, to the mesh is normal. Just pushing it in, kind of. The red box. I know it looks really bad with red box. Já começando agora no ZBrush, fiz um modelo, mas não consigo deixar na proporção sua reta. Você tem uma dica? É, é meio complicado, é, porque são várias partes dessa resposta. É, só que você tem que aprender sobre observação. Então eu diria assim, faz uma boa pesquisa sobre observação, você tem que aprender a medir as coisas e meio que criar elas do jeito que elas são e não do jeito que você a, a vê. how it looks from this angle. I don't know if I nailed the shape though, but it's a pretty good prototype, as I like to call it. Observação é um dos fundamentos da arte. Importantíssimo. Maybe I made it too frilly. I also don't want to do um, RGB smooth. I feel like the gills need to um, more like. I'm just gonna do this to show you guys. They need to like uh, go down. You make a more interesting shape, you know, than just the basic curve. But then again, the basic curve was just to test the theory. It almost makes it look a little off off putting. What do you guys think? But in a good way, like a good off putting. You like the gills? Marcela, que bom. É muito bom. Vai ser um, 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 uma coisa que você nunca vai parar de aprender, mas também vai se, te servir por muito tempo. E aí nas peças de formão, que faz conceito. Now I just have to come up with the design that I like. I kind of like this shape. I'm like, kind of like just two. What do you guys think? We you typically the layer with the gill cascading a few in a row? Uh, I won't. Uh, I'm probably gonna do it manually. But I don't think I would do that by duplicating the layer. If I wanted to copy it, I would use uh, maybe the extractor brush, but I'm not totally sure either. Natalia, hi. Let's, let's see what this design makes us feel. I'm just gonna mask the area that I want to protrude. I'm gonna go a little further. Right here. Go up a subdivision actually to make this cleaner. Well, apparently this is the higher subdivision. subdivision. Okay. And then get this one. Move it just down and out a little bit. Hmm, it looks weird now. It's melty, like her skin is melting. But since this is a layer, it's really easy to um, to uh, change.
we can just use more targets um, which are a great way to like change up your layers a little bit too because you can just store the original and then just um, sorry and then just use the more target brush um, Sorry guys, I, got, I guess I got really into this for a second there. I'm like, what am I even talking I feel like this front part needs to go. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. I think she'll be fab when finished. Oh, thank you. But yeah, guys. Have you guys been doing a lot more ZBrushing now that like everything's closed and all that? I have, for sure. I'm going to turn off the skill layer and I'm going to store morph target. Then I'm going to turn it back on and record. And then I'm going to take the morph target brush. I think it's called morph. 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 And I can use it to just erase things um, that I don't want anymore that are inside that layer. Clear this area out, and you can use it in different intensities too, which is really cool. Like create some fading between the new and the old. Yes, everything is so boring since the buyer. How long have you been sculpting? You must be very experienced. Um, I've been sculpting for like six years. No, five or six years. Seeing what happens if I, if the more I walk it off. Here. I kind of like the shape of this bottom one, but I don't like the shape of the top one that much. Uh, great gay song. Good to know there are digital artists like you from my country, especially with such an incredible level of mastery of technique. God bless you. Ah, gay song, thank you. Obrigada. How's Brazil doing it from Canada? Brazil is uh, not doing the best it's ever done, um, but I'm also not there. I live in the United States, um, which is also not doing the best it's ever done. <laughs> when did you learn ZBrush? I learned ZBrush when I was in college, uh, about halfway through. Um, I went to school for game art and design. I wanted to be a game concept artist, but then ZBrush came and changed everything. So is this your profession? Yes and no. Um, I do 3D arts. Um, I'm a technical artist by profession. And I do like some ZBrushing, but not a lot. But all, all my stuff has to do a little bit with this. All my work. Just like this um, play build up to just kind of like walk off. Kind of like I want the gills to be. This is not. Symmetry is a little bit wonky in this piece. It doesn't seem like I have uh, complete symmetry. Which is great, you know? Great. Really easy to work with. Um, I'll probably fix that. I think brush always helps a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
very cool. Uh, is your job just to do models or do you do other things too? Yeah, I do a lot of other things. So I'm called what's, uh, I'm what's called a technical artist. Um, I do a whole bunch of stuff. I do stuff that requires more logic, like scripting. Um, I do stuff that's more technical, like optimization of games, like like I'm the person who has to go in and look at like what the GPU and the CPU are doing and why they're doing that and god where's the problem and then like diagnose issues if your game is moving slow um, I do a lot of shaders like more advanced shaders and things like that um, I do like gameplay programming as well do a lot uh, rating I the only thing I don't want to do and don't like doing and I'm not good at it um, is animation because animation is its own it's its own career path, you know, that's what I always say to my bosses when they ask me. <laughs> animation is its own career path, you don't just do it like for shits and giggles or whatever, like you just you have you have to study it. And until I do, I don't really want to like be doing it professionally. Antes de você ir para os diversos, você desenhava assim muito, muito, por vários anos. Hello, <laughs> Natalia, it's okay. Your model starting to look in place. Thank you. Dre Techniques, thank you, Pablo. Yeah, it's a brand new model. I just started, so I'm I'm trying to work it out a little bit at a time, you know, no pressure. This is supposed to be a more fun one, you know. I've been on this quest to kind of improve my self-expression as an artist. Um, I feel like I, I focus too much on the commercial aspects of like getting a job or, or maintaining a job or what I gotta do for jobs and stuff like that uh, with my art. But that's not why I got into the business um, of, of tech, of any of this business, honestly. Um, and so I need to, I, I, I felt like I had to step back and I felt like I needed to reassess my priorities and stuff. So I'm trying to do like more fun pieces that um, represent represent my aesthetic choices and tastes better. And turns out my, my aesthetic choices are very, um, I guess, Delicate and feminine and ethereal Took a little soul-searching to remember that, you know, I just did the same thing I did on the rest of the model guys like I took the um, negative Damien standard or I guess positive Damien standard um, Just running that along here to kind of create an interesting interesting look Actually, what happened? But I'm gonna leave that off. It's not time for detailing. And work it like into the shape of the rib just a little bit. Discreetly, kind of. Too much. I'm I'm smoothing too hard. Um, if you ever think that you're smoothing too hard, and you're getting rid of all the detail you just put in place, um, just press down spacebar. And then press down shift, which will change the settings from normal brush to smooth. And then while you're pressing down both those things, you can just change the intensity of your smooth and all these different details about it. I love the face, especially the eyes and lashes. Thank you. So she's going to be dead in this piece. It's like, it's a dead mermaid piece. Right now she's not dead because I want to like get her design down before I did all those things to her. Poor thing. Um, so she's going to have like these really thick wet lashes and like half closed eyes. Um, I want to make the lashes like really thick and pointy, um, like they're stuck together. It was glue. really exciting. Any tips for beginners? How did you improve in sculpting over the years and you wish you'd learned that thing first? Oh, that's a great question, Dark Knight. Um, so my tips for the beginners is that um, sculpting, let's talk about sculpting in ZBrush first. So ZBrush, um, much like most 3D software, 
can have a quite overwhelming amount of options. It can have an overwhelming amount of, um, of how to put it, like buttons and, and UI elements and things like that. And you're like, okay, I can use move brush to do this, but I can also use stand, uh, I can use um, snake hook, and I don't know which one to use. Um, my tip for any beginners is just step back, step back, forget all of this, forget all these buttons. You only need to know like five things to get started in ZBrush. Um, and truly, you'll find that artists, like the, the pros we all look up to, they also like, we all have these like sets of like five to 10 brushes we use that we just use over and over and over again. Today I've only used Move and Demian Standard and Play Build Up so far. So that's three brushes for practically like most of this. Um, so just step back and realize, make, make a list of the five most iconic things to use. So I'd say that the most important things to know about ZBrush when you're a beginner is how to navigate, like zoom, rotate, things like that. How to save out a file. Um, move brush, Damien standard, and clay brush. Masking and smoothing. So that's seven things. Um, things I wish I knew um, when, I, when I was beginning that I didn't know and that I know now that I wish I had known. I don't know, I feel like I learn and unlearn things all the time. I'm really, like, I'm gonna get sentimental with you guys for a second, I guess, but I wish I had known to believe in me more. And that goes for sculpting. Um, I believe in myself way more nowadays than I did ever. Um, and it helps. <laughs> it really helps stop that, like, paralysis of, like, I'm not good enough. I'm like, Girl, you do you. Enough with the patriarchy standard. We're a new era. <laughs> um, hi, your work is really great. What basic things you maintain on your artwork allows? I don't understand the question, but thank you so much. Do you mind uh, rewording the question in a different way? Ana, mais uma pergunta besta. Sabe dizer por que eu normal bump map? que eu faço no Max, fica mais nítido do que eu faço no ZBrush? Será que estou fazendo algo de errado tendo que copiar no ZBrush? É, eu, eu olharia para ver se você está usando a Mesh no, no nível mais alto possível no ZBrush. You gave her really beautiful lips, love it. I know, right? Just full lips. I love like plump lips on my models. I don't know what it is. It's gonna, it's slowly gonna become one of my signature moves is to like just get the model all these Botox lip injection every time. Wouldn't it be cool to have a script that tracks how much of each brush you use and chart them? Oh, that would be great. Because then we could like make like a news article or something like... What would Michelangelo use? Okay, maybe not Michelangelo, but like... Um, you know, there's all these guys we all look up to. Um, what do they use most? I, there's only one artist out there that I consider to, and I don't even know this for a fact, honestly, but like I consider him to be the most diverse user of ZBrush that I know of. Um, and I bring, I, I, some, I don't want to come out like a stalker. I've, I think I've talked about him on like my last three streams. Uh, Pablo Munoz, I think I learned his name. Um, he knows so much about ZBrush, like, he knows all the little tips and tricks and tools that nobody uses and stuff. Um, like, he knows a lot of it. Um, he's the most diverse user of ZBrush that I know. Most people will just stick with, like, five things. As far as I know, five, five things might be an exaggeration. For me, it's definitely true. I definitely do five things a lot. No problem, Saeed. Hi. Uh, how were you able to develop all of your different skill sets? I've been developing my 3D skills for about two years. I've been a 2D artist forever, but I would love to have a bigger skill set to be more employable and often don't know where to start. Oh my god, it's my, that's exactly what I did. So I'll, I'll go into my story real fast. I'm gonna try to get the summarized version. Um, so I, while I was in college, I was in love with ZBrush, and I still am, don't get me wrong. Um, but 
I found that being a character artist uh, right out of college wasn't the most employable choice uh, for me. I wasn't good enough. Um, you know, those, those jobs tend to be more competitive. Um, they have less positions for more people, which is what competitive means, but anyway. Um, and things like that. So I, I graduated and I had a portfolio of nothing but character arts. Mediocre character arts. Sorry. And so I was sitting there like, okay, what do I do now? Um, so I got with a friend and I decided that the only way for me to be employable, oh, by the way, I also had a visa, a student visa at the time. And after you graduated, you had 90 days to get a job or be deported. So that's stressful. Imagine how stressful that is. So I sat with a friend and I decided that the, the best way to be more employable would be to switch, um, switch careers paths at least for a while into being a um, technical artist and I knew nothing at all about being technical artist I knew how to draw and I knew how to sculpt and ZBrush I knew how to read top I didn't know how to do anything else not even proper UVing because college was kind of a letdown <laughs> um, so I, I sat down and decided that my focus was going to be the Unreal Engine and then I did everything I could and within 60 days I had a job as a technical artist, it was crazy. Um, so really what it came down to was studying. And the problem with diversifying too much is that I, I should probably sculpt and talk at the same time but I'm so passionate about both things. Um, which kind of ties into the topic, right? The problem about diversifying is that I feel like I grow slower in each thing. So I'm not as good of a sculptor in 2020, right now, as I would have been if I had focused on being a character sculptor, character artist, whatever, you know? I would be so much better uh, right now. And I feel like if I hadn't focused at all on, on characters and I had just focused on like Python or whatever, I would be so much better at that, but I didn't, I had to focus on all these mini things and and just learn a little bit of each one and then increase a little bit, so I feel like I'm like a jack of all trades, master of none. But that's very employable, so you kind of gotta like work your priorities like that. Do you want to be like a masterful uh, character artist or do you want to be highly employable, get a very good salary, because being a technical artist is a very good salary most of the time and and so i made that choice right i had to do it because otherwise i would have been afforded um what it came down to for me was separating my day into chunks that let me learn different skills so i would at work learn like blueprinting or or optimization for a little bit do my job there then i would get home rest a little bit and then learn a little zbrush and then the next day um after going home i would i would look up a um, shader making tutorial and try to make like some ice and unreal or whatever um, then the next day same thing you know rigging um, and just kind of like take that penalty that that and just embrace that penalty that you're not going to be masterful in all those things right away um, but kind of just force yourself to study uh, it's really hard um, to do that but I, you know, the, the, um, the need, um, I, I, what is it like, the desperation kind of trumps everything. And I feel like I made the right choice. I, I kicked myself for years, kicked myself for years saying myself, I can't believe I made this decision. Um, I am getting so much, I'm falling behind in everything. I, I am not as good at character art like, the, like I would have been. Um, my some of my college um, friends are surpassing me like I can't believe I made this mistake but at the same time you know it was really good choice <laughs> so I, I don't know you just gotta make your own choice what's more important to you after learning ZBrush how much can we earn Depeche that depends on so many factors that depends on who you are where you live whether or not you got lucky um, how good you are at negotiating? Are you famous? Do you have an online presence? Is that a good online presence? Um, your portfolio, who your clients are, where you got your job. So many factors. 
Bye, believe me, Anna, you're a real great artist. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Do you know what VFX artists do? Um, not particularly, but like, you know, they do the VFX, so um, explosions, uh, fire, particle effects, um, things like that. A lot of the time they do stuff like that. Simulations. Oops, sorry, I just punched the mic. Simulations and water and things like that. Hair a lot of the time, too, from what I understand. It changes a little bit if you're in movies or in games, but I think it's the similar things every time. <laughs> you're a renaissance girl and jack of all. <laughs> that's one way to look at it, actually. That's a way more positive way to look at it. Uh, from the year... Okay, I will look her up, Natalia. But not right now, yeah, but I will look her up when I finish the stream. Very interesting. I only have characters in my portfolio and I can't code. I've tried. So I guess it's uh, over to environment art for me. Um, there are more things you can possibly do, right? Rigging? Animation? Really, like, you're probably going to become... Um, um, you're probably going to become... A generalist. Which is also more employable, especially in smaller companies. Um, you know, like many, many smaller studios need a lot of, um, and they need a lot of shit. What am I talking about? Instructor. So basically, they have smaller teams, and they need people to wear multiple hats. So becoming a generalist will definitely help you in that process. Uh, I disagree knocking down the jack of all trades. Being versatile is really important in production. I don't have to be a master coder, but dabbling in code lets me automate things. Oh, Rui, that's the exact opposite of what I was doing. I was telling you that I am a jack of all trades and that for years I I thought it was a bad thing, but it's actually not. That's kind of like the takeaway from what I was talking about. Posing mermaid could be a very dynamic pose. Curious what you will do. Um, I was talking about this earlier in stream. She's going to be dead in the shot, and she's going to be like half floating in water, kind of like very gesture-filled um, death scene. That's my favorite way to pose. Uh, my favorite way to pose is to um, cheat. No, just kidding. I do a super super simple rig in Maya, pose it in Maya, then bring it back into ZBrush. But you, I've also used um, Z sphere posing in the past and transpose tool and they're all fine too. I just like the easy way of changing Maya because you can just like you can just rotate the, the bones. Where do you start the technical artist path? Any suggestions as an experienced person? Um, it depends on, on the needs. So basically this is gonna sound like I'm avoiding the answer but uh, the way I started and the way I recommend you start is research. So what I did was I researched my area and I was like, what do they need? I need a job. What do the people that are hiring right now in my area need? Uh, and I read and I was like, oh, they need Unreal. They need like shaders. They need um, blueprinting, whatever, right? So I was like, okay, here's a very concrete list of what they need. Easy. I'll learn those things that could be different uh for you in your path in your area like if you're trying to get into different things then uh, it just goes down to researching look up what the uh, technical art jobs are listing um and just go from there is really the most responsible thing to do i think um it will give you a very solid foundation but sorry i need to look freeze in the middle because I'm being irresponsible with my usage of polygons here. You ever worked in Hollywood movies as an artist? No, I've never. Natalia, I disagree. Lucky is a thing that doesn't have just one factor. That's so sad, but a great idea. 
I think it's important to understand that with any successful business, you gotta start at the beginning and eventually you will get to the top. Um, I feel like, okay, I don't want to get dark on you guys, but like, luck is something that we don't consider a factor in the United States anyway. But um, there are there are factors like two people with the exact same skill set with the exact same everything might not end up in the exact same place you know one might end up better than the other and that's because life is random and chaotic and that's how the universe works um everything's um totally crazy but here's the thing it's our job to do things that that position us better for uh, opportunities that come that position us better for for handling all that stuff I kind of want to like stand, stand it down like these areas. Like things like that to like give like lines of action almost. I don't know if I'm tripping here. What do you guys think? It's too clean. Maybe if I were more discreet. Oh, by the way, I should probably get out of the gills layer. 100%. I'm working in the wrong place. Uh, the thing about layers is that you probably should leave them clean, like, the gills layer should only have gills in it. But now it has all this extra stuff, because I messed it up. So, we'll clean that up later. But now I'm in a different layer, so everything's fine. Uh... <laughs> looks like the nearest Targaryen from the sea. Nice. Oh my god, it really does. Nice. That's a, that's a fun, uh, actually, coincidence that I might run with. A lot of practice is needed. Lots happens when you create chance. I think so. Luck is what hard work and opportunity. Absolutely. Run down a few solutions. But like so many things can be a factor. Uh, for example, say you have an amazing portfolio and you get an amazing job, um, but then you get there and your boss is totally crazy and horrible. Like it's it's just one of the factors that make life walk in paths for us. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense, but like there are so many things. Nothing's black and white. Uh, você usa algum brush paint? Você faz básico do programa? Você faz básicos mesmo, às vezes eu uso algumas que eu compro, mas não como é a parte principal do meu trabalho. Até agora elas usam uns 3 ou 4 básicos exatos, só tipo algumas coisas. I'm gonna play paint from the skin looks great. Did you use a scan? Yes, I did, Raggy. You can tell because it has like all these different little um, imperfections, although I did paint over the scan already. Um, I added a lot of the coloring, um, so it's like 50% skin, 50% uh, stuff I added. I added a lot of these imperfections, a lot of the like little veins you can see through, um, different color palettes and stuff. I can actually show you guys what the skin looked like that I started with. But um, she might be naked, so I'm going to turn the display share off for one second. Um, and then I'll bring that up. Um, hi, bye, Natalia. Nice chatting with you. Awesome. Bye. Thank you for coming by. Still loading. Where do you buy your scans usually? Um, I don't like this is the first time I've bought a scan. Um, wait, um, if, if I accidentally show, um, female nudity on stream, I'll get the channel taken down. 
Um, here's the original. This is the original scan I bought. Um, this is my model that I've worked on. Um, so basically, I, this is my first time working with a scan as a base, so it's actually very handy because, like, you don't have to obsess so much about the proportions of the human body as much because, like, it's scanned, you know. Nobody can tell you're wrong at that point because it's scanned. So, yeah, uh, I bought these from uh, where did I? One second, I remember where I bought these from. <laughs> it's literally called the 3D Scan Store. Open up for you guys. Oh no, it might show nipples. I'll find one that doesn't have nipples. Oh, so it's called the 3D Scan Store. And they have all these like cool um, scans. Some of them are cleaned up, some of them are raw. These ones are cleaned up, but the topology on them, I must say, is very bad. Um, so like I wouldn't use it for anything that wasn't like for me. Um, I don't consider this to be good topology at all. Um, I can't show you the boobs, but if I were to, actually I can because I, I took them out. But it still kind of looks like I'm showing you guys boobs. You'll see that it doesn't contour to any sort of um, loops that make sense. Like the face is fine, but like I hate the way they did the arms. Like to me, this is a sin. I don't know if you guys agree, but they have like literally a star right here at the armpit. Um, feels weird to me like I'm used to something a little more clean um, it doesn't contour anything and then I just added the tail onto it um, so really like I'm not in love with it I don't think I'll use it again except for like speed sculpts and things like that well you sell a generic base they wrap around the models I know they they almost definitely do but I don't like the way that base is created Hi, Gabriel. Um, I've never used a scan as a base yet I've been looking for good skin skin textures used for play paint though oh um, if you are looking for good skin textures 100% go to texturing XYZ like from what from what I consider, like, they're, they, I consider them to be the best. And so many people in the industry use them. Like, it's a really cool thing. Um, you can buy, like, a full face for, like, $25 or something like that. It's really cool. So, wait, just, you just got the head. You got the body and the tail. No, I got the, I got the entire body, but then I add, I took off the legs and I added the tail. Uh, hi, Great Warrior. Do you know how to remove missing files from the lightbox? There are black icons with question marks on them. Thanks a lot. I've never had that issue. I'm sorry, Art and Time. Um, I'm guessing the files disappeared in the, um, in the Explorer. I have no idea how to change it around here so that... So that they're not black, though. Looks like so clean. Thanks. I just added in the tail. <laughs> it was the easiest three model I ever made. Um, what was I doing before? So I had a new layer before I got distracted for like ages, literally. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, som čula dva. Ah, Diego, greetings. Welcome, welcome. Trying to figure out what to do next. Because like, I, I guess I should come up with, the, up with the design for this area right here. I wish I could show you guys the references I'm using, but like a lot of it's like drawings of mermaids and stuff when they're all naked and I feel so bad. I think I'm gonna hide these gills for now. Um, kind of just like work on where they're gonna come out of. I think the gills are going to like go ahead and make this focal shift smaller. I'm gonna make like a little, I guess, resting area for them right here. That's probably the real name for this, right? Resting area. We should stay in school to master this. Uh, but you know, you can master this at home 100%. Like, there is so much free, amazing content out there for you to learn from. Uh, I believe you can do it from, from wherever you are if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the poly paint off. I'm gonna do it by going here to render and fade opacity. Actually, that turns off this one too, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I'm going to go to poly paint, color reds, turn it into like a gray, it's easier to see. Um, sometimes poly paint can be very distracting. You can't really tell uh, if your shapes are working, and in this case, they're not. Um, I really like it. Do you think that it's weird that some artists name their characters? Oh, absolutely not, Diego. Like, why would that be weird? Characters have names. Like, that's just one aspect of their creation, you know? Um, if you're working for a movie or a game, odds are your character's gonna have a name. So it's not weird at all. Anyway. I have no idea what I'm doing, guys. I, I'm just gonna like throw designs together um, in layers and then just see from there what happens. Uh, all I know is that I want a strong like action line in the tail. As long as you're alive, it's still possible. Absolutely right, V. You're completely right. 100% correct. Actually, like, I need to work on the primary shapes of the tail before I do anything else. Like, look, it's just, like, a popsicle tail. Like, we need to, um, make this better. <laughs> so, I'm going to see if I have any references for, like, female body and things like that. And I can click on there. How you pose your model? Um, there are many options. I'm thinking I'm going to rig it in Maya though, and then bring it back in Easy Brush to detail the pose. Alright, let's go in there. Lower subdivision as possible. That's good. And give this shape a more dynamic, or this tail a more dynamic shape. Click on it, work it out, work it out. See how it's like just completely flat. My imaginary friends are blamed for that. Oh, I totally understand that. I have imaginary friends that bully me all the time.
try to be looking at a fish's tail for this. What fish should I use as reference? There's this Brazilian river fish that I love. I've actually swam with these in Brazil and I've pet them and they were like all excited and happy. They were very nice, huge. It's like swimming with dinosaurs. Is an A pose less troubling than T pose? Um, for what? They both have their pros and cons. <sighs> Character artists tend to prefer A pose because it's just easier, nicer, more um, pleasing to the eye, I think. Uh, but riggers will tell you with full certainty that T pose is the way and the path to follow. Can I sympathize with the riggers? Because let's face it, they have a lot of pain in their lives. <laughs> so if a, if a rigger asks me to do a thing, I'll do a thing. Let me look up an electric eel, electric kettle. I hope you guys are ready for some creepy monsters. I am trying to find like a tail that I would like that I can follow, you know. It's not an electric wheel either. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. I'm just gonna search for eel. I think the banana eel, maybe. Seen the banana eel? They're brilliant, aren't they? They're amazing. Rain animation purposes. Natasha, obrigada. And you don't have compressed muscles in A-pose, easier to sculpt. <gasps> Sorry guys, I don't know if this creeps anybody out, but I like this one. It's got like, you see, it's got these really nice, um, I guess action lines would be a good way to put it, like, just segments, you know, it's, it's nice. Oops. Here. I hope I'm not creeping anybody out with my Google searching. This one's great. Look, look at how sinuous this is. Oh, it's so good. European eel. Oh, yes. Today I was like, I always search for reference on the Pixelogic streams. Today I'm not going to do that, and then I did it. Saltwater eel is a good one. Let's search for saltwater eel and then an European eel. You're so cute, guys! Oh my god, I'm freaking out. So, I love animals so much. It's ridiculous. Like, I always have. I love animals. I love... Oh my god, look at that! That's exactly what I want. I love animals so much. Like, I, I grew up watching Animal Planet and stuff like that. Like, it's so nice. I have no, like, I love these references. I have no idea how I'm going to integrate this with my model, but you know what? We are on this path together now. Oh, this is cool. I really like these. Eels are just now turning into a favorite animal for me. So we want to see the European eel. By we, I mean me. Oh yeah, no, this one's good too. Damn it. I love these right here. Amazing. I have no idea how I'm going to integrate this into my model. Yeah. 
Recently I got asked um, where I get my aesthetic inspirations from. And that is such an easy answer. I get it from nature. That's it. People and nature is what I like. Beautiful people, beautiful nature, ugly people and ugly nature as well. And, and I bungled the answer so bad that I feel bad sometimes. Siamese fighting fish? I'm gonna look that up real fast. Look at that. Oh, the beta? That's it. This is what comes up when I search for Siamese fighting fish. Very pretty. I have a lot of those in my reference. Your sculpting pretty may remain not a sea monster. You don't know that. What tablet are you using? I'm using this really basic um, Intuos by Wacom tablet, medium size. I think it's either called an Intuos Draw or an Intuos Art. Justin, hi! Hola, 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 Elas não mereciam isso, por mais que elas fossem me matar. Totally oh, unfinished, thank you. Oh, by the way, totally, 100% forgot. I always forget to um, get my links for you guys during these streams. Complete and total failure on my part. One sec, let me get this. Gotta just figure out what my links are. I don't know how to do this. Anymore, Twitch changed everything and I used to store all my links on Twitch. You know? Now look at me. Completely lost. Sorry guys, one sec. Now I'm posting my links in chat in case you want to reach out to me, follow me, keep updated with my art, tips and tricks. Um, I have my own personal Twitch channel, Anna Carolina Arts. The actual, the, my username is right there on the screen too. Um, and I stream ZBrush every Sunday at 5 p.m. Central Time. And we always have a really good time on there. It's really fun. Tomorrow I'm actually doing a very special stream uh, in which I am um, sorry, in which I am uh, doing critiques for the community. So if you want to get your work looked at by me and other uh, professional artists, um, make sure to come by at 5 p.m. Central Time uh, to my personal channel, Anna Carolina Arts. And yeah, I'll see you there because it's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be like three or four hours of just looking at people's work on stream, giving feedback, having discussions. It's, it's always really fun. You're doing awesome jobs last time. Uh, you do want an avatar with a face reference to it, which you animate that avatar face. Um, yeah, I didn't do that. It's not done yet. Not fully done, but it will be soon. So tail. So now I have brand new, very fancy. <laughs> References for tail, no clue how to integrate this into my model. I think what I'm gonna need is a line down the center for one. The little subdivision? See what this does? Line on the center too. 
guide me. I'm turn my smoothing down. The brush is saving. You need to submit work ahead of time, or will you choose at the stream? I will. I will ask people to submit work twenty minutes beforehand. Why would I be upset, Saeed? If you're looking for a job, then try Bollywood in India. Yeah? Are they hiring a lot now? I'm gonna consider adding a... I have no idea how to do this design. Hi, just send me a message. I'm not upset. Why would I be upset? And then maybe like a line going down here. The tail, the tail is one of the parts that I'm definitely going to focus on the backside too. Uh, the cause beings that I want nice twisting to it. Um, so we're going to see all angles of it. It's not smooth or anything, but... So for blocking out and maybe medium level details, move them standard and play build up is enough? Um, I use that, mostly, so I would say so. Okay, and then since I'm blocking out, I'm gonna make the play build up um, focal shift be in the negatives that's just what I do I think I have more control over it when it has this like nice square alpha on it right now I'm just kind of like sketching out like possible ideas for how how we could do this um, tail musculature design. This is like the kind of like just the, the a bit of designing phase. So I'm. It's a good thing that I'm doing it on a new layer because if I hate it, I can just undo that layer and try again. Which I do hate it. Focus if it's so useful. I know, right? You should put vampire teeth on her. You won't be able to see her teeth at the end. I need to make better use of focus shift. Oh, please do. You will never go back to not using focal shift in your life. Like, it's so handy. Like, um, for clay buildup, for example, I use low focal shift to block out, but then when I'm making muscles and stuff and like more organic details, I'll turn the focal shift to so, like, this is focal shift down. Uh, but if I want like to like make the muscles and stuff, I can bring focal shift up and just get this like nice, like 
more organic looking detailing. And then if I want to make like veins or something, I can pull it even further and make it smaller and then like create the veins. It's really cool. Let's undo that. There are a lot of settings I forget about when working. Oh, me too. One of them being perspective. Boy, do I forget perspective every once in a while. When will Zinvi be able to read my thoughts? Um, probably 2028. Just kidding. I don't know. Um, really, whenever computers start reading our thoughts, I think we'll be pretty solid. Are we making Zimbush models game optimized? Manual? Uh, Many real topologies needed, or zero mesh works too. Um, so in 99% of the cases, manual real topology is needed, um, especially if it's going to be animated or if it's going to, if or if people are gonna see the wireframe in your portfolio, then definitely auto retopologize it. Like you don't want to look bad. Um, and automaz automatic retop, no matter how good it is, will probably make you look bad. Um, so. <laughs> But if it's, say, like, I, I've made exceptions for this, say it's not an animated project or, or model, say it's, like, a big old rock and I don't want to decimate it for some reason, so I could, I could totally just automatically z-remesh z it and then, you know, just put it in the game and everything's fine, nobody cares. I'm gonna turn the coloring on um, for this part because I think it will help a little bit with my visualization. Which is funny because I totally had colored the tail, but I guess it's gone now. Oh, I probably had. Oh god, I had RGB on. Nailed it! Let me see a little miracle night though. Okay, so this tail design is not good. But it's a start. It gets us headed. It's our, our brain thinking about what the possibilities are of the future. So, undo that. I think I put it on its own layer, but if I didn't, then that's my fault. I would think most of that was in the town right here. A little bit of armpit work and arm work was in there too, but right now I can just take it off and try again. <laughs> now I think I'm starting to understand what I'm what I want to do. Um, Oko, I don't feel so bad spending so much time in manually retopping my work. Thanks for the advice. No problem. When you have an idea where you want to go with the model, you can chop it into polygroups and keep polygroups on, on when zero meshing. The IP is supposed to be sent retopable with only a uh, little manual work if necessary. Um, then that kind of defeats the purpose of being able to start with high poly and going to low in the end. There are so many ways to do it. I personally just like manually retopping. It's the tools nowadays make it so easy, you know. 
Maya, for example, has such good tools. It's almost, I don't even mind. Griff Tricks, hello. Actually, I'm gonna get this shape to be more straight. Okay, about that. I expect in year five, re auto retopple will pretty much get rid of many auto shop. Oh, oh, for sure. Retopple is one of those tasks that is going to go away so fast with uh, automation. So fast. Which texturing software do you prefer? Um, I prefer Substance Painter because it's easy <laughs> and it looks fine. But I want to learn Mari. It's my list. Someday, I believe someday we will we will get there. You're a senior professional job, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, cool. I, I think I found one of the first shapes I want to do. I want to do like this like double line down the center. I think it's interesting. Shamansky, hello. Um, good night, Anna. I'm gonna turn in. It's really a great stream and it's helping me stay motivated. Aries, I'm so glad. Thank you so much. And for stopping by, I'm glad this was helpful for you. The forces, um... <laughs> the forces are red and violets are blue, which is called proportion scheme. Should I choose? Moons or pounds? The return of the shell bra. I know, right? The shell bra has come in handy time and time again. Like, the final one won't have that, but it's great for streaming. But I also, if you can tell, like, there's this green stuff on there, it's because I've also, like, fully censored the actual anatomy itself. Um, hello Anna, sorry for my ignorance. There are program over ZBrush for creating a realistic texture directly on the mesh. Yes, uh, there are 
many other soft doors you can use, um, but I think Mari might be what you're looking for. I just got here and it's looking really cool question though what does they have to do with vr will you optimize it later for vr um maybe but like i'm a vr artist um vr technical artist so like often we have discussions about vr we're just not doing that right now what's up again yeah let's see if i see it We just touch on it every time we do the stream. I'm about to do something weird. I want to see what happens. Nice round mesh here. Mask. Lasso. I want to see what happens if I twist this shape. Hopefully this doesn't crash everything and ruin everything. Uh, just, I probably should... Oh no, it has layers. It's okay, we can do this. Let's duplicate it. And again, hope we don't ruin everything. Layers. I'm working on the new one, right? Hopefully. Yes. Layers, layers, layers. What was I doing? Not turn symmetry off. How do I still have layers? Didn't I just delete layers? Oh my god, we changed meshes somehow. Sorry guys, this is going well. Hey, but do you mean to talk a little bit about your own workflow for creating VR game ready 3D assets? Of course. Um, so my workflow varies drastically on the goal. Nailed it. I don't think this is gonna work until unless I fix the um situation here. Because I thought the gizmo being where it is would help, but it does not. Probably go ahead and save this file out just in case. It's always good. Make sure to use um, incremental saves, those are very handy. <laughs> um, so, my workflow for VR assets is very similar to your usual game uh, type workflow. Uh, the difference being that I have to be extra, extra careful about what platform I'm deploying to. So if I'm working on, on the Vive, do I know what computers the players are using? Um, but what if I'm working on something more... Um, I don't want to say like hardcore, but something like the Quest, right? That has all these really huge um, requirements like of how much topology it should have what kind of materials you should create for it 
then it changes everything. Um, but really, like I like to keep keep be careful with um, uh, scale is a huge thing in VR. Um, you will really get to know the problem with scale if you work in VR. Things that look fine on a 2D screen don't look good in VR a lot of the time, and that goes for scale. And um, normal maps are an issue in VR because they don't work the same in stereo as they would on the screen. They give you all these different issues, they look flat, they look like graffiti basically is, like a, is how I like to describe these. Um, and so uh, oftentimes you gotta like not rely on as much on normal maps and rely more on on um, actually modeling in sorry modeling in the parts that are actually supposed to be 3D but that you could possibly fake with normal maps and texture maps in general it's really hard to fake anything. Because your players, you know, you can't control them. They could be getting as close as they want to literally anything. I had no idea Restream let me block users. Um, that's cool. I really like these like little like spiky bits. We have one hour to go. What is your guys' favorite mermaid design out there? It is mermaid after all, so there's a lot of mermaid designs out there right now. Although I'm not doing this for a mermaid, it's just it's a coincidence. That's true, it's really challenging. I guess my follow-up question would be, do they usually tell you how much poly budget you have for a specific asset, or do they just let you do your own thing? Um, I, I am the one who decides that um, when it comes to a lot of our projects. Um, and it's based on research and things like that, and like knowing the scope of the entire scene. Like, if I know that, um, if I know that the scene, you know, it has, um, it has like one room that has four white walls in it and then like a super and then a tv that's supposed to be amazing then i know that i can tell um the artist or like make that decision or make it myself or whatever that it, it can have a lot of polys but if i know that the room is actually a theme park and it's you can see you can see off in the distance and things like then i'd be like okay like let's tighten that up way more so it's, it's just kind of almost like a almost like a scientific decision that like you have to take all these different va variables into, um, into play, and make it interest, and make it the most intelligent choice, hopefully. Real fast, guys. I'm going to paint this real fast because I had painted it before, but I lost it. So there's a paintbrush tool, which really like 
it surprised me to be honest because I had no idea I've been doing ZBrush for so long without ever using this paintbrush tool. So this is gonna be like a very pale mermaid, kind of like albino-y. So I'm gonna go for like pale colors um, and do like some fades and stuff. Almost look at make it look pearlescent if I can, um, with like these like, interesting fades that I like anyway. Move along with more to like a pinky color. See how it gets very discreet, but it's there. Pedro, hola, tudo bem? Oh, what's my portfolio website? Let's check that out. So my my portfolio is on on um, an art station, and at one point I decided to delete all almost everything from my art station and replace it. So I'm gonna post my links in in chat, so you probably can see it. Thoughts on the Chernobyl VR project? It looks pretty cool. Oh my god, I have not seen that. But I'm going to, as soon as this is over, I'm going to do that research. It seems very interesting. As I get closer to the skin, though, I'm going to switch over to having an alpha, like this veiny one. Just so, like, it, it doesn't give me, like, a perfect blend and more, like, a overlay. You see? You can even take the, the skin color itself and bring it down. Thank you very much, Mateo. Mario, obrigado. But I loved the Chernobyl series. I thought it was one of the best series of 2019 um, for me. So I definitely will watch that PR thing too. It's gonna be fun. I still haven't even finished Alex Half Life. Oh god. I can also take this color and kind of paint the gills a little bit ever so slightly. this purpley color from the bottom and add that in too. Take a little bit of the skin color and just overlay a little bit of it over the top. Make it more subtle. Did you settle a debate for text budgets or triangle budgets? Um, what's the difference deep down? Like, I work in triangles. It's it's easier for me to understand. Like for the mind to grasp triangles and points for me anyway. But I feel like there doesn't necessarily need to be a debate, you know? 
I'm gonna just add a little bit of that blue color to the ears very discreetly. It's kind of like highlight some points in the ear with blue. I want it to be like very rich in color, but also like mostly pastels because it's supposed to be a pale piece. You always texture with poly paint. Which tutorials do you recommend for texturing? Um, I don't know any off the top of my head any tutorials for poly paint. Uh, but I do always poly paint everything, um, and then I either leave it at that or I bring that poly paint into Substance Painter, and then I do a pass, and like kind of like make that the base, and from which I kind of like uh, build off more detailed stuff. A little bit of purple in there. Love your work, uh, Anna. Do you always I read about that one? <laughs> Isn't the vertex count just triangles divided by three? Not always. because they can have different configurations so like i don't know how to explain it you could have six versus six triangles but depending on how you how you place them you could have more or less vertices if that makes sense so like example i'm about to give like a weird example in the middle of this i'm easily distracted today i think i had a long week um I had these two triangles as my piece, then I would have six vertices, right? But what if I had them like at like two, three, four, four vertices? So it doesn't always uh, scale the way we wish it would, not the simple way. <laughs> she looks like a cyberpunk character. She could use a little face paint. That's what I say about every character that's ever existed though, so I'm probably not going to give her face paint. I feel bad for banning too many people on the Pixelagic channel. I'd be curious about like how much the other artists ban people. I need a mod. I just mod myself. <laughs> I would love to ban a lot of people that deserves it. It can be interesting. Never feel bad for providing yourself with peace of mind. No, nah, don't worry. I don't feel bad. <laughs> like I, I, it's more because it's like not my channel. But you know, 
I share it. Making it a better place. A little bit at a time. Deals back, see what I think. Switch to mask pen. That's great. Consider like bringing it out so that it fits that gill. See what happens. Before I turn to figure out I can find you on our station, I will post the links to my stuff in chat. You are from Twitch? First of all, I'm going to turn RGB off of the snake hut. Okay. These are placeholder gills. Yeah. Mm, feels right. <laughs> Raise up higher. Whenever I make the gills for real, I'm going to make them flat and then I'm going to um, deform them. Uh, into the right shapes and poses with the deformers and zbrush. The deformers and zbrush are amazing. They are very good. I personally love them anyway. I used them to make hair cards recently and now I'm addicted. <laughs> Snake hook for this, it gives you a lot of good flexibility on your mesh. Things like that, you know. It's great for blocking out. Guys, give me one second. I haven't taken a break this whole time. <laughs> You definitely need one. 
um it was the bathroom and stuff so i'll be right back uh make sure to wait for me if you want to i'll be right back to work on this mermaid a little bit longer I guess I'll take some screenshots here. Be right back, guys.
I'm back, guys. Hello. <clears throat> you guys miss me like choking on water just now. Thanks for waiting, everybody. Raina, you're excited to see a, um, a render. I am excited to see a render too. Absolutely. Oh no. Welcome back, thank you. Headley. Headley. Tudo bem? Estou bem. E você? Is there anything specific you have to take into account in modeling for VR? Totally. There are a bunch of things you need to take into account. Um, oftentimes, VR has very... I, I, I talked into this earlier today already. VR has very specific um, requirements, so depending on the... Um, on the um, device you plan to output to, um, so you're gonna have to like do a lot of research on that, uh, figure out exactly what your budget is. Um, in VR, there are a lot of things that don't perform the way you expect them to. Um, one of the little ones I mentioned earlier was scale, like things that look good on the computer screen oftentimes don't look good in VR. Um, another one is like normal maps. Um, we rely a lot on normal maps for a lot of things. Um, example, if you were making an airplane and the airplane had a little like detail on it, maybe like a plaque or, or a little very small handle or something, um, you might normal map that in. But that does not fly in VR. Haha, <laughs> airplane fly. It does not fly in VR because the player can get really up close to it and they have stereoscopic view which, you know, like normal maps are, don't fool as much as they they would in person in, in the computer screen. And there's a bunch of little other things. Mmm, my god, I got a scissors. I'm still struggling with my references here. You hear my cat sneezing in the living room. Could you guys hear that?
go lesson star thank you so much i appreciate it Um super chat é melhor, Headley. Com certeza. Um, I already said thank you, Susan, for your great comment, but thank you. I'm gonna do another test real fast. I'm just gonna use snake hook without symmetry on and see what happens if I like wait before I should save. Just in case. Just in case. It's a good idea to always save before making um weird decisions that you don't plan on keeping for sure. Or any like major um or any major um operation like zero meshing and stuff. It doesn't hurt to save. I use the clay toothbrush with that alpha. Have you tried it? I've tried it before. Is that your favorite? I can't wait to actually pose this, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a little bit more twisty. Feels like you don't need to do smoothing as much afterwards, really. Somente você possui uma rotina cronograma para criação das esculturas a tempo que estou escrito e sigo principalmente seu trabalho em formas inglês que conheço mais ou menos frequentemente e me ajuda sempre. Eu não tenho, na verdade. Tipo assim, uma rotina da minha semana ou uma rotina do, do projeto em si. Um, I'm studying 3D modeling and do you have an email or other for iShamer projects and have critics? Yeah, I can share it with you.
posting the um, Discord link that you can use to to join my Discord server and communicate with me. Um, if you want to get a critique, make sure to post it in that server. Did you just have this creature with the least fear? No, no. Oh, and Lucas, like, ask a piece of advice. I don't want to come across mean. As a piece of advice, if you're a student trying to make it in this industry, um, reconsider the way you speak to professionals, especially women. Um, it is very unprofessional and it puts you in a very bad light to start a conversation with. You're very cute. Give me a critique. Like, you need to be more professional if you're trying to make it because this industry is very small. Very small. And people talk and if you, like, give off creeper vibes or, like, harasser vibes or anything like that, then it goes against you quite a lot, so. It's just, like, it's just, I'm sure you didn't mean anything by it. Um, but you have to be smart. You have to be good. You have to, like, not burn. Not burn your own reputation while you're still a student. Like, it, yeah. <laughs> you have a Brazilian name? I do. Was that you? I'm like... Uma rotina de semana ou mais, só mais em projetos específicos que você planeja? É, eu, eu, eu tento às vezes planejar, mas dependendo da minha, do meu estado mental, assim. Se eu tiver, se eu tiver muito é, mal ou cansado, eu não planejo nada. Se não, eu, eu planejo. It's gonna be cool when it's all posed with its like nice gills and stuff. Bruno, love you sculpt screaming for me. Oh, thank you, Bruno. Obrigada. I just wanted to load in before I did all this, but it's taking a little hot second. Probably shouldn't have saved it in its highest poly. I'm not 100% sure about this, but I feel like, um, I feel like when I save my tools out with the lower subdivision, they, they're smaller and they don't take as long to load. Do you use a base mesh? Sometimes, depends. Sometimes I do from Sphere, sometimes not. Morning from Northern Cali. Um, morning. I wish I was in Northern Cali right now. I love California so much. It's like the one place. If I could choose to live anywhere, it would be California. Twenty more minutes to stream. I'm just trying to like bring out her um, more like features that make her look even thinner, like more delicate. But I don't know why. Sometimes it just shoots off into space. My brush. I think my tablet's getting old or something. I'm just kind of like making her clavicles here look very stabby. It's a little bit too much savvy, but you know what I mean. It's fine. It's 
Yes, yes, yes. Why smooth garden edge? I have never heard of smooth garden edge. I'm sorry. For Maya, don't work in ZBrush. Is there a way to keep the edges smooth without subdivision levels? Um, I'm not sure. Um, you mean like like the actual edges themselves, like these? Um, just make them soft, like in Maya. I've never tried. I don't know if there is a way. I don't know if if ZBrush works like that. But I don't know. So don't take my word for it. I've just never tried it. Um, usually I just use subdivisions. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to like make her look like almost off-putting like like the skin hurts a little bit. It's very tight. Mm -hmm. Stuff underneath is so bony. How long are you living outside of Brazil? Was it a professional decision? Um, I'm living outside of Brazil for like seven years now. And it, it wasn't a professional decision on my on my part. Um, but, you know, then it became one. I feel like this area of her neck is a little bulgy. Everywhere I look, there's more things to do. And I like it. <laughs> I honestly didn't know it was supposed to be hard and edge. I was just like, I've never heard of garden edge. But honestly, like, I would assume, like, I wouldn't assume that that's not a thing, you know? I have problems sculpting human anatomy. Any tips and tricks on material it's just to get better? Yes. Um, so, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to hunker down <laughs> and you're gonna have to study. Human anatomy. So basically, you you might want to, for example, print out some pictures of people, and trace over um, and separate the muscle groups, um, color them in. Like um, I did this for one of my projects. Let me show you. Okay, I need to pull up a reference board for class. But like shade in different muscle groups, uh, which will help you get an eye for what goes where, what connects to what, right? So that's one thing. Another one is you're going to have to focus on. Um, so this is what kind of thing I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, I went in and I just kind of like drew over the uh, reference picture, kind of like colored in the different little muscle groups and stuff, um, which really helped. So we'll do a little bit of that study. Um, and then observational observational skills are super important. Uh, and what that means is being able to look at something, be it a picture or a drawing, a concept art, whatever. You have to look at it and you have to be able to recreate it, be it in 3D or drawing or whatever. And that is one of the core abilities that people look for in 3D artists. So, um, there are many ways to get better at that, but most of it's practice. So like drawing and, and sculpting, just what you see, break it down into proportions, length, sizes, um, and just try to make what you see, not what you think you see. And, um, and then just a lot of practice, you get a lot of feedback from professional artists whenever possible, you know, it's really important. Um, So I'm, I'm often checking from like 
these angles so that it looks like horizontal because um, that's how this piece is going to get rendered. So I made it look nice from, from this angle, but like from this angle, it's totally bad. Now that looks really bad from the front. So I can always be rotating around your model just to see what you're doing from every angle because sometimes something that looks great from one angle looks like horrible from the other. Finally got up here in San Francisco to watch your stream. Better late than never. Yeah, we have 10 more minutes. You got this. Ilbrex, thank you so much. You love the sculpt already. What do you think of the cartoons, creations, and ZBrush? Um, I think they're, they're. I don't have a particular um, opinion about them. Some are good, some are bad, just like anything else. But you know, it's, it's probably fun to make. I like the sharp edges on the cheeks and collarbone. Thank you. It's like a stylistic choice I made with this character, and I'm really happy with it. Are you in freelance? Lucas, no. I work at a studio. Your model has really come along. Can't wait to see the final. Me too. I hope this is a faster project than usual. usual because, because it doesn't have all these technical aspects that I need to like slave over. So that that's helpful. <laughs> Hey John, sorry, thank you. How far did you push the model and polygon counts and for which parts, thanks. Um, so it depends, I make things for games most of the time, so like I, I retopologize and all that good stuff. Um, but when I'm sculpting, I push it as far as I can, as far as my computer can handle it and as far as I need to. And then I can just, you know, project it, bake it down into a texture. Can you even see what I'm doing? Kind of adding these like vein like structures to her. Very subtle. I don't want her to be a pretty mermaid. I want her to be delicate. But she is going to be dead and in a, a painful pose. And she's going to be... Basically the lore for this um, is that there, there's, it's one of my stories, like, like, this is just a minor, 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 minor part of one of my stories, but basically there's this uh, lake with three girls in it, and this lake, uh, and they're mermaids, um, and this lake is made of very corrosive water, almost like bleach, um, so it kind of, like, it's taken its toll on, on the mermaids that live there, um, uh, it's kind of bleached them white over the years, um, and you know, it, it's just a very, very difficult, uh, 
kind of like an ambient to live. They do it anyway, and they're like adapted to it. But they have like they have the physical signs of people that have been submerged um, in such in such liquid uh, for so long. And I want um, and in the scene that I'm going to put her in, it's going to be like the scene from one of the climaxes of the book, which is when she gets out of the lake and like transforms into uh, like she gets legs. Uh, she transforms to to send uh, her boss a message. Who she's you know being adapted to and she just is trying to get him a message but at the same time there's like a three-parter war going on and she she makes it through so her skin's like all not used to being out and uh, out and about so she's like walking with her legs uh trying to make it through this battle scene and like there's like twigs going into her skin her skin is super soft almost translucent that's kind of like look I'm trying to go for some I'm gonna add like so many veins you know like you're gonna see her like blue with the veins and stuff and she's walking through this this place and like getting all kinds of damage and then eventually before she's ever able to reach him she gets shot with an arrow through the chest on total accident nobody was actually fighting her um, and she collapses and dies and that is the scene I want to make, but like right after that, um, I want her to be floating in this very shallow pond, um, and you're gonna be able to see like the little uh, plants and stuff under the pond. There's gonna be like flower petals and leaves floating in the water. She's going to be like contorted a little bit, um, like like grasping her chest, but already dead. Um, and I want there to be a lot of gesture and emotion in the piece, and. Um, and I want her to have her mermaid tail back, because that's cooler than deformed human legs. Um, but still. That's kind of what I'm going for, so like, I don't want her to be like a pristine, beautiful being like we were talking at the beginning. Like, she's delicate and like, almost damaged. But, um... That's why I'm, I've chosen to put so much, um... Use the, um... What do you call this? The Adenian standard in reverse so much? Because it creates this like, very binky sharp look to the details which I think fit this piece perfectly all right Arthur they're magical beings are mermaid mermaids mammals because they don't seem capable of bringing a baby into the world the human way but if they're not mammals there's no need to nurse and so no need to use shells and short mermaids are confusing and they're also not real <laughs> um like if they have fish, I guess, like there could be room for, for both. Or they could be like a platypus. So hear me out. Platypus. They lay eggs, but they still um they still uh lactate and drink milk. I believe mermaids are like platypuses. One last question. Making terrains in ZBrush and decimate them is better than creating them directly in real real unity? Um, I wouldn't consider that to be true uh, myself. I personally wouldn't do that. But if I wanted a very particular look to my to my terrain, I wouldn't. I would try it. I would sure give it a shot. I've never been one to like shame workflows, so if I think it could work, then I'll try it, even if it's unearthable. But the thing about creating your terrains directly in Unreal or whatever is that, like, they're the right size, they have per good um, LODing built in, like, better for performance, things like that. Alright. Where's the gamer skin, Dainty? For, for the terrain? Oh, oh, I missed the chat. Yeah, it started with the scan database mesh. This one. This is what I started with. And as a 3D modeler, you have specialities when you touch everything, weapons are organic. Um, I don't understand. What do you mean touch everything?
kind of, like to give the impression that her bones have certain shapes to them almost like a crustaceans but they just they're just under the skin po poking up at all times almost looking uncomfortable that's kind of the, the goal for this piece is like to look a little bit uncomfortable and it's supposed to have emotion but that will come later i'm sure and take symmetry off even though it's early i don't like taking symmetry off so early but Let's work on how, how like weird and bulgy that part of her neck looks. It's just from the um, from here, like it's realistic, but she's kind of a you know she doesn't look like that. Dei sair, meu tempo fica cada vez mais corrido, mas é de grande ajuda assistir mesmo que seja só um pouco do seu trabalho. Agradeço a você é melhor. Obrigada, Hedley. So I'm gonna go to the lower subdivision whenever making big changes to the primary forms. It's a good idea to go to the sub to the lowest subdivision you can, or at least a low one. Um, which will help you with not creating ugly um blobs, dents, un unwanted shapes to your model. Things that make it look lumpy like uh, chewing gum. Her face reminds me of several Irish actresses. Oh, nice. Uh, that's kind of what I was going for. <laughs> Irish actresses, specifically. In the company, you are specialized on a particular, in a, on a particularity of in a field or environment where you feel comfortable, or you can make weapons by going through a character. Um, in my company, I wear many hats. Many, 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 many hats. But I'm a technical artist. That's my main hat. I've made everything though, uh, except for vehicles. I never make any of this. It's not like a rule I made for myself, like I'm just the kind of person that doesn't make vehicles. More like, um, I just never have, except for like school. I'll just buy vehicles. <laughs> I've made everything though. I'm not the goddess of creation, except for vehicles. <laughs> Guys, looks like my time is over. But I want to keep going. This is so much fun. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them now because I'm wrapping up my stream. That's gonna be cool. Not yet, though. I'm not ready to make that kind of decision yet. Is anyone streaming after this? I do not know. Schedule! Today's the 23rd. 
Oh, let's see. I just sent that here. I think I'm alone today. I think I'm going to be on stream. How did you do the effects of the eyes on your alien? Oh, gosh. Um, it is, um, it, it, it follows the viewer because it's concave. So whenever you look at it, the concavity of its shape changes. So it's concave, that's the trick. And then it has a uh, convex layer of just transparency over the top of it. Did you guys rock the memory legend? I am, I don't know about the base logic guys. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to start wrapping up now. I'm going to post my links uh, in chat for, for you guys to follow me on social media if you want to. Uh, I posted also my own Twitch channel link. I have my own personal Twitch channel where I stream every single Sunday um, ZBrush uh, content. It's very fun, laid back, kind of like social night with ZBrush. Um, Tomorrow we're doing a special stream where everybody who submits their work is going to get, or I mean, we're going over there and not everybody might make it, but um, we're doing critiques. Um, so make for sure to follow the channel and submit your work for critiques tomorrow. Um, critiques by me and a lot of other artists of all, of all calibers, a lot of professionals and stuff like that. So if you have a piece that you want to get critiqued, tomorrow is the day to do it. Um, I'll see you guys. Make sure to follow the Pixelogic channel wherever you may be watching from tons and tons of amazing artists stream on here um and i love them all and they're so nice and inspiring so i love them anyway guys thank you so much for for hanging on in there and i hope you have a great weekend thank you guys make sure to stop by tomorrow on my personal channel make sure to follow pixel logic